Hey, what's going on guys? Um, so the other day I did a podcast with the author Gary Tobbs and Gary Tobbs is a New York Times bestselling author. He wrote a couple of books. He wrote Good Calories, Bad Calories. He wrote uh, The Case Against Sugar. He wrote Why We Get Fat and he also um, wrote a few books about physicists and you know he busted cold fusion but he's really known for his nutrition work. Um, and basically what he does, he's a science writer, so what he does is he goes out and he looks at research programs that are based on bad, on bad science. So one of the reasons why he came over to nutrition is because he noticed that there was a lot of bad science going on in nutrition and that a lot of the things that we've done uh, over the last 50, 60 years have been based on really poor research models. Uh, so I was in a, it was a really great podcast, really great conversation with him. And, um, I highly suggest you take a look at the show. I'll link it below. Uh, but we got a question on it. Um, and it's from a gentleman here on YouTube and he said, I read good calories, bad calories and why we get fat a few months ago. Nevertheless, I'm wondering about the implication of this new paradigm for athletes, not only endurance ones because the majority of implications of this research are linked to obesity. In order to stay healthy and lean, I doubt everyone needs to uh, exclude carbs, especially the complex ones. Personally, complex carbs are a major part of my diet uh, and, and help to keep my bowel movements in check. On top of the performance at the gym, um, following, my, following my test of, of he gets better performance at the gym when he eats carbs. It's um, the, the sentence was just a little bit awkward there. Sorry. So um, he's basically saying, you know, what about athletes, right? Um, and Gary's research basically revolves around obesity. It revolves around um, uh, heart disease. And his latest book, The Case Against Sugar, revolves around diabetes. Uh, and so he's really looking at health here. But but this gentleman is asking, what about guys who work out all the time? What about guys who are out there training all the time and and um, you know trying to uh, to to get more muscular to perform better and things like that? Well, there's a few different things, and I know he did, he said not endurance athletes, but this piece of research is actually very applicable, and I'll tell you why. There was a recent piece of research by Dr. Jeff Volick out of the University of Connecticut where he took. Um, these ultra endurance runners and what they did was they um, put them on a treadmill for three hours now half of this group was on a high carb diet for six months and the other half of the group was on a very low carb high fat diet for six months and they took muscle biopsies halfway through the trial which is a three hour inclined treadmill run that must have been hell um, and it must have been hell with those muscle biopsies as well and they started looking at um, how their muscles were responding to the exercise based on the diets they did. Now, what they found was that um, the people who were on the high carb or the high fat, low carb diet actually had better glycogen retention, and they were able to perform as good or better than those who were on the high carb diet. Um, and you know, the implication here for you as somebody who's trying to put on muscle. Uh, is this. I don't know if you've ever been to a bodybuilding show, especially a, um, a local bodybuilding show, but you see um, these guys. If, if you look at the novice division, um, you'll see some guys there who look completely emaciated, who look like they've, um, you know, basically been starved for a few months. And the reason is because these guys... Um, uh, have been doing these really um, high protein, low fat, low carbohydrate diets. Now, prior to that, what they were doing was these um, mass building diets or quote unquote bulking. Um, and during those diets, they're, they're, they're loading on the carbs, they're loading on the protein. Um, they might be getting a bit of fat in there, but most people who do those, these bulking diets, they focus on the carbohydrates and the proteins. Um, and then when they remove the carbs from their diet, what happens is they start actually burning uh, protein for fuel, right? Um, they go through a process called gluconeogenesis because a lot of these guys don't do high fat diets, so their fat's very low and they're doing a really high protein diet uh, and uh, they're doing a really low carb diet. 
so no very low carbs very low fat but really high protein they might be getting a few vegetables in there now what happens when you do this is a process called gluconeogenesis you're actually utilizing a lot of that protein not for muscle repair or anything like that but um for glucose to to fuel your brain and your body converts the protein and the amino acids into glucose in order to keep your brain alive right and because you're not getting fats, what happens is your hormonal levels, they, they, they drop severely because um, cholesterol is actually the precursor to all of your anabolic hormones. So um, in this case, uh, you know, the, the implication for you is this, when you're on a ketogenic diet and you're using fats for fuel, your body's not going to start to eat into your muscle mass when you're trying to lean out. Right? And so if you're doing this all the time, uh, the ketogenic diet can actually be very anabolic. Um, and I'll link some studies below that demonstrate that the ketogenic diet actually performed very well for building muscle mass. I'll also link that Volick study. Um, and the Volick study demonstrates that you know, you're getting better glycogen retention on a ketogenic diet. So when you're trying to lean out for these types of, uh, of um, things, like say it's just the summertime, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to get more muscle energy on a ketogenic diet than you are on a very high protein, low carb, low fat diet. And, uh, um, that when I mean low carb on that sense, that starts to happen when you get to about 150 grams. Um, if you're very high protein and, and you're not fat adapted, once you get to about 150 grams or lower, you start to really feel it right now. This gentleman also said that he tried this and he got smaller and weaker and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. The first couple of weeks of a ketogenic diet, until you've been fat adapted, you go through that process of fat adaptation, um, you've, you're not gonna feel great. You have to give your body some time to get used to burning ketones. And that's why when we run Warrior Soul Keto Camp, we put significant effort into um, helping people get through that adaptation phase to give them everything they need to make sure that their mineral intake is uh, uh, sufficient to ensure that they don't get dehydrated because you lose a lot of water when you go into ketosis. And that can definitely affect your weight loss and can affect your um, ability to perform and it can severely affect your strength. So these are all things that, that, that um, you want to really look at if you're going to try it, right? You can't just say, hey, I'm going to experiment with a ketogenic diet and then low, lower your carbs and raise your fats and expect you're going to feel good right away. There's a process here that you got to go through. Now, what's the real benefit here for performance athletes, right? Because I don't know if this gentleman was talking about being a, a performance athlete or being a high level athlete. He was, I think he was talking more about building muscle um, or, or just being in the gym and getting stronger, which a lot of people who aren't athletes want to do. But as far as performance athletes, what is the benefit here? The big benefit here is being able to switch between the two fuel sources. And um, again, I'm not one of these people who puts somebody on a ketogenic diet all the time. I, I, I think that the ketogenic diet is a very good tool to use for certain circumstances. Um, I am wholeheartedly in favor of including a lot of good healthy fat in your diet. Most of the eating I do is ancestral, um, you know, which means that if my great, 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 great grandfather looked at what I was eating today, he'd recognize it. Um, my great, 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 great grandfather probably wouldn't recognize a pop tart and he probably wouldn't recognize, um, you know, a ho-ho or a Twinkie. Maybe he'd recognize a Twinkie. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, I, I try to make sure that my food is from the ground or, um, that's been, it's been, um, uh, grown. Um, and I want to make sure that it comes from the earth in some way. So that's the big thing. Now, um, uh, for my for the athletes, the big benefit here is to be able to switch between these two fuel sources. And the reason why I said um, that I don't do the ketogenic diet all the time and under all circumstances, particularly with athletes, I want to get them to a point where they're going to be able to um, to to burn fats or sugar or glucose depending on the situation, right? And what I mean by that is like if an athlete has gone through a day where they're 
you know, I'll take, I'll use myself as an example. I don't consider myself an athlete, but these are times when I'll, I'll include carbs in my diet. If I've done a, a weight training session and I've done a, uh, like a kettlebell endurance session, and then um, at nighttime I've gone and rolled jujitsu, I'm probably going to include a cup of rice, a cup of white rice in my meal um, after that last jujitsu workout. But the point is, I include, I, I consume my carbs after. I've done that level of activity. And that means I'm ext one, extremely insulin sensitive. Uh, I'm a bit glycogen depleted and I can handle the carbs. But a lot of people are consuming carbs all day long and um, they're including a lot of carbs in their diet and tons and tons of protein in their diet. And what happens there is um, that leads to uh, um, a good amount of inflammation in the intestinal tract. It leads to um, uh, uh, lessening of their level of insulin sensitivity, so they become a little bit more insulin resistant and they start to load up fat around their waistlines. And so the way I consume carbs is I consume them when I need them, which means I get more out of the carbs that I eat. Um, people who, who consistently load carbs up all the time, um, then you know, they're not, they're, there's a point in diminishing returns with carbohydrate, right? Just as there is with every nutrient. And my belief is that our point of diminishing returns with carbohydrate is a lot lower um, because we have a limited supply of uh, our ability to, um, to store glycogen. You only have about 2,500 calories uh, of stored space in your muscles for glycogen which is what we look carbs look for carbs to turn into to to become muscle energy you only got about 500 calories more in your liver right so it's about probably 3,000 calories total so if we're constantly eating you know 3,000 calories a day and and um, you know we're constantly loading up carbohydrate we're constantly loading up protein which can eventually be converted to carbohydrate if we're eating too much of it then um, we're doing nothing but fueling our fat stores um, but the way I eat, I eat a lot of fats, I eat a limited amount of protein, and I eat um, a, a very little bit of carbohydrate, right? And w sometimes I'll include the higher amount of carbohydrate, and when I do, I'm able to utilize it to fuel my muscles, which is what everybody wants to, to, to use carbs for anyway. Um, and I have more ability to do that because I'm not eating them all the time. So this is a metabolic advantage for me. Right. And then if say I go crazy and I go out there and I eat a whole pumpkin pie or a whole cheesecake one night or I go eat a whole pizza one night, you know, which might happen, may or may not happen uh, once every couple of months, um, then I can switch back into ketosis pretty quickly because I've been fat adapted the whole time. And basically what I'll do is a fast. Right. Now, to the question of whether or not complex carbohydrates um, are more or less healthy than, you know, say sugar or anything like that, or if, if it's all carbs, um, you know, I think the, the biggest thing is we want to avoid that refined sugar that Gary talks about in the case against sugar, you know, the beet sugars, the, um, the uh, what's it called, um, the uh, high fructose corn syrup. Um, you definitely don't want to be consuming that on a regular basis. Um, and and uh, if you're eating a lot of packaged sweets, um, a lot of baked goods, a lot of uh, desserts and things like that, a lot of fruit juice, sodas, um, these are things that can seriously affect our insulin sensitivity. And, um, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but like, you know, one of my biggest concerns is with the veteran community. Obviously, I'm a Marine Corps veteran and um, I run the podcast for veterans, but um, a lot of them, there's one out of every four veterans admitted into the uh, VA system is diabetic, right? Um, and diabetes is rapidly growing here in the United States like crazy. Um, a lot of people are not diagnosed with diabetes. I think I have the statistics here. 29.1 million people, that's 9.3% of the United States, have diabetes. Um, 8.1 million people are undiagnosed. And uh, if you read Gary's book, 
you know, that, that increase in diabetes directly correlates with um, the uh, uh, increase of sugar consumption. Um, and there's some people out there who want to blame meat. There's some people out there who, who um, you know, want to blame fat. But this directly correlates with sugar consumption. Um, and uh, it's something to really think about. So I, I, I'm not saying don't eat fruit. I'm not saying if you're not gluten, um, uh, if you don't have a gluten allergy, then I'm not saying don't eat gluten. All I'm saying is that you can get more out of the carbs you eat if you don't eat them all the time and you include them in strategically at different points in your diet. And that for me is after I've worked out in the day. And that way I'm able to experience the benefits of ketosis while still experiencing um, the benefits of including carbs in my diet in a strategic way. So that was really long, a lot longer than I intended it to be. Um, I'm sorry about that. If you guys are interested in learning more about this, definitely check out the podcast with Gary Tobbs. Um, in all our podcasts, uh, write us a review on iTunes if you can. And um, <clears throat> let me know what you think of this video. I'm always open for questions at info at warriorsoulapparel.com. And check out our website at the Warrior Soul Goji, uh, www. <laughs> www.warriorsoul. That's S O U L A G O G E dot com. Jesus, this video has made me um, brain dead. Well, I'm not brain dead. I actually feel great. But uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.